We're going to do it like, 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 like this. Old school to new school. We got the interviews. B-Boy, Reg, and Butter. Butter. What up, dog? Red footage and rhyme ciphers. Producers and songwriters. Our podcast is live. live I'm cold. You don't have to write bars to be a superstar. We interview them all. Managers and A&R. Hood right. legends and athletes and record execs. Your favorite rapper's favorite rapper may be on the show next. If you're trying to get lit, then I'll show us the light. Blue checks don't mean shit if the amount ain't right. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment when we live. We on all platforms, so you can watch anytime. Funky fresh in the flesh, y'all. Subscribe now. What up, though? This B Boy Reg. I'm DJ Buddy, y'all. The funky fresh, fresh. Yes. in the flesh. Yes, right. That's right. We back oh, again. Yes. yes, sir. I pass it to Butter. He pass it back. <laughs> What's going on, man? Just chilling like a villain, man. Oh, okay. Just checking out these latest clips in the world, you know. Oh yeah, I seen you had the uh, the Street Lords clip. Oh yeah, that, that, when y'all, what was y'all on Seven Mile or something? Yeah, it was. Um, QD Three was in town doing beef, and we was helping him out. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, he was. They was out there. Um, they was out there wild as hell, pissing yeah. in the middle of the street, drinking liquor. <laughs> He's just seeing how seven mamas do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> rest in peace to Fat Mike. You know, shout out to KDZ. Blade Ice for the rest in peace. Yeah, that's some uh, classic yeah. footage. Yeah. Y'all was out there at night because I was like, I can't hardly see any faces. I was like, is this one of them? Um, you know how they do them documentaries when they black people faces out? <laughs> I was like, oh, he got some footage of some real street dudes, but no, nah, right. they, they yeah. were camera having fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, we did that. Uh, damn, that probably been like a year after Proof Pass or something like that. Right after Blade and Proof Pass. Oh man, a year or two or something like that. It was real hot on the streets too. Yeah, that's crazy. Bro. So what's going on in the hip hop world? What's what new music you listening to? Uh currently, man, I've been take, checking out uh Trey D and his wife, man. I like what Trey D and his wife is doing, you know? Okay. Yeah, hardcore West Coast's wife be spitting. Oh, I gotta check that out. Yeah. I gotta check that yeah, out. Yeah, shout out to Trey D, man. Yeah, that's yeah. cold. Um, man, that new Art of Rock Climate vinyl back there, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Getting that out there, you know? Oh, yeah. I just checked out the, um, who else? Wayne, uh, Wayne and 2 Chainz. I was listening to some of that. Oh, yeah. Wayne just killed the, um, verse, that Big Dog verse. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was dope. Um, who else? You know what I? You know who I had to go back and listen to, man. That that we seen him perform this summer, and I I would hear like some of his music here and there, and I always yeah. liked it, but I never like really got into him. Was Fat Ray? Oh yeah, Fat Ray. And I was just like, damn, I just I can't say I slept on him because I knew he was good and his shit was tight. But I never really got into his projects like that. So I've been digging deeper into his projects. Like, damn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, I've been skimming through your Young Jeezy new album. Uh, just, just seeing how he hold the album down with no features, you know? Yeah, yep. Yeah, he got a lot of songs with no features. I've been listening to a little bit of his stuff. Yeah, that's See how he hold it down without, without a label. He doing it all independent, you know? Yeah. At this point in your career, at, at a certain point in your career, you could do that, especially nowadays without, you know, a big, you just have to have good internet presence and a good team behind you, really. Yeah. It's just you, your, your people skills. If you didn't make anything happen in the five, five albums, six years, six albums with the label, you got to be able to go back to your Rolodex and call those guys without a team. Yep. It's, because a lot of that stuff, you know, the, 
streaming is is terrible out here. <laughs> so, <laughs> you gotta watch yeah. how you perform everything with music, you know. Yep. So some stuff, you know, like every business got has its core. Like I don't care what technology come, I don't care what distribution come. Some things have to be done to the core, like relationships, networking, um, being able to sell yourself, all of that, that never goes away. And then talent, you know what I'm saying? If you if you a whack rapper, you got to be a talented whack rapper. Like you might not have bars, but you got the talent, the stage presence, or maybe you dance or you good at making goofy records or something. It just, you know, you you gotta. It's it takes some talent somewhere. It, you might yeah. make a wax song, but your voice hitting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What they say? Um, Ice Ice Baby is about a hundred million sold or some crazy shit. shit Man, like that. it's through the roof. Man, he, I seen that. Vanilla Ice, I seen him on TV, just was smiling, like, man, this thing keeps, I think the thing sell a million a year or some crazy stuff like that. Yeah, all that death row money, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see, should have been wilding out, man. I, I've been seeing some clips. i seen um one clip where he's talking about Master P, like, P ain't never came to see me in jail. <laughs> like, he wasn't even on the list. I like yeah, that's yeah. Stuff. You gotta be able to tell your story, man. That's what it's, it's all about being alive to tell your story and free yeah. to tell it, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm learning that just in business in general, like being in like a business environment or owning a company, like you got you can't let people tell your story for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because especially when it's an old story where like people memories get jarred. Like I remember I recorded with dudes, um, recorded with them, brought beats from them, took them, was driving them around, taking them home, picking up, going to the studio. And I bumped it. I bumped into one dude like on some business stuff, some real estate stuff later. And he was like, he had reached out to me because we was already connected on social media from years ago. He was like, man, I can't even remember how I met you. And I'm like, dude, we, we did like four songs together. But that was just a blur in time. Like, we 50 now. You know what I'm saying? That was 30 years ago. So I can't be mad at him for not remembering. But when I'm sitting there telling him some of the stories, his his how he remembered it was different. You know what I'm saying? Then it started coming together, but some of them details. But it's hard to remember if not not remember if you visited somebody in prison discussing two million dollars. Right. You know, so right. yeah, right. man. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. What 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 you what's what's been hot on the presses that you've been paying attention to? Yeah. Well, I like the fact that Ice Cube is gonna be on CBS with Big Three right now. Um, yeah, got it. He I know he's been, he's been fighting to do that, and um, I actually went to one of the Big Three games in Detroit, and bought some of his merchandise, and just seeing his come up. You know what I'm saying? Bought his hats, you know, just to see what kind of material, and where he get his hats from, and seeing how the hats change and things. You know what I'm saying? Right. But um. Just seeing how the stands is filled, who who DJing, who how many sponsors he had, but to see you know to see him on CBS, I'm happy to see Ice yeah. Cube got that popping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Hey, it's a um, big three. Yeah, I was watching. You ever heard of this baseball team called the uh, Savannah Bananas? They they based <laughs> out of What's Georgia. <laughs> They like the they like the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball, right? It's oh wow, it's, really? yeah, it's a documentary that's out there, like on YouTube. It's like it's yeah, I guess it's sort of like a documentary, but it talks about how the owner he was a um a baseball player like in college, and he got drafted to come like manage this little team, 
Then eventually he went and brought it was like a like a minor league type team. Um, well, no, it was a professional, like right. semi-pro type team. Um, and he he brought them, but he started adding entertainment to it. And then it started getting so big, like, but when he brought it, the team was in debt, like they was just losing money. Him and his wife, they kind of like sold their house and put everything on the line to get this team and get this stadium. And like, man, they started getting fans there and it turned around to where like, they started going on tour and whatever um, league they were in, they end up getting out of that league and just taking a thing on tour. Now they got like professional players that show up and do exhibitions with them and all type of stuff. But it was like hearing that, and seeing Cube start already like as a celebrity with a little backing and everything, it kind of show you like some people just get blocked, even though they got like a lot more resources. And I don't know if Savannah Bananas going to end up on CBS, but they made it to ESPN, right? Without the resources that Cube had, but it just go to show like um, the playing field is not always equal when you can get somebody to come up but it's still a come up story so it just go to show cube just put the work in to make yeah. that happen you know that's dumb. yeah to see you know see who he got you know he go town to town and get the town the local mcs he had in detroit he had a royce to five nine a pz open up for him and yeah things like that so you know, his influence to get the the other influences to to keep his brand going, this sometimes you got to beat up the streets to do that when the sponsors ain't sponsoring, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope. Hey, oh, did you see? Um, yeah, you see Nikki D when she was posting about um some of the younger female rappers. I think she had like Ice Spice yeah. or something. She had. Yeah. Yeah, she was just kind of. She didn't really go in, but she was kind of saying, like, damn, is this what we doing now? Because it was like the only time the crowd reacted was when she turned around and shook her bare ass. But it was like, is that is that how we gauge in female rappers now? No. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's kind of up and down. I mean, I, I think sometimes I think the uh the art of sexuality is, st- is still important in a lot of ways. It just, you know, I think that the, the Bill Cosby approach and, you know, the whole family, man and women. Right. You know, uh, man being attracted to women and that that level is starting to get, it's starting to change. So, you know, right. we bought a Jet magazine for the knowledge and, and the beauty of the week. Right. You know, Right. I just want to hear the music, the music better at the same time. You know, that's that's not not taking a charge at high spice. You know, um, you know, it, it's important for the young young boys to see a pretty, pretty woman on stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me know, let me man. let me ask you this, right? <laughs> let me ask you this, right? If if who the fuck calling? I don't even. I didn't even know we had my home phone work. <laughs> I don't even give out my home phone number. That's crazy. <laughs> so, um, somebody probably trying to fax me. <laughs> hey, look. So let me ask you this, right? You got a daughter, right? And she eighteen. Would you rather her be? A rapper showing her ass on stage talking about eating booty hole, or would you rather her be a porn star? You had a porn star or a rapper? (laughs) No, I'd rather for her to be a rapper. I mean, a rapper is is just, it's words of weapons, of course, but that's actual fucking. Right. You know, that's actual in the act. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I think that the uh I think the estrogen and the uh 
Testosterone has been thrown off in the world. Yeah. You know, just it's just it's just that man. I love. I used to well, love watching Jet magazine. See who on the cover. Go through there and see what what the cover story was about. Reverend Ron. Yeah. You know, I I I say that it was like man. It was like, let me see the jet. Oh, she's beautiful. Okay. Here's my popcorn. Let me go read the cover story. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was, and yeah. then go look at the charts in the back. What's hot? It was a balance in the world. Right. I think the, the art of a JJ yeah. Evans in the world has been kind of wiped away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not to take yeah. take away from our J, you know. JJ, he was he loved Florida, but he didn't look at some booty too, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, James, but, James, uh, you know. Then you got hey, you got you gotta say James. Yeah, you, then you got you gotta say James uh, Evans loved Florida, not JJ, because if JJ was looking at Florida that way, we have a whole different. Yeah, James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Hey, look. I mean, that's look, just. I mean, I enjoy looking at. Her and her Betty Boop. I'm like, damn, she fine. She looked fine. She done switched it up. You right. Know? But I be wanting to see, I be wanting to see our women to not give up on it. If they wearing baggy clothes, if they they beautiful, don't give up on your art. Don't give up on what you set your 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 template to be in life. Don't give up on you. We. Everything is a question somebody else shit, man. Yeah. That's it's just true. it's just that. If you sister soldier, if you little Kim, be that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's that it's that balance too, because like remember all the women was wearing baggy clothes and looking thuggish, and then everybody was complaining, oh, the women not feminine enough. You know what I'm saying? They all trying to be dudes. Then when when the women got sexy on them, then it was like all right, and they kept pushing the boundary. Then it just got a little bit over. I I think the perfect balance though was like salt and pepper, because they they of had course, the feminine right. energy and they still acting. Yeah, yeah, they stay right. active. They are they are female run DMCs. Right, they stay active and they still torn. You know what I'm saying? Still, still looking sexy, old, older in, in life. You know what I'm saying? You hey, know? low key though, me, me and my that, boy. Don't lose that. Don't lose. That. Low, low key. When we was in high school, we, me and my boys used to try to watch uh, three five Old Town three five seven. You see, they they was sexy back. <laughs> they was sexy back then. I didn't like the music that much. They had on the man. Uh, they came to my high school. For real, man. They was BNGB was right by my locker. <laughs> man, she was BNGB was by the locker sweating. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> hey, you, hey, they you came to the sweat on your locker. Did you sniff <laughs> it? <laughs> man, them man. They were so out cold back then. Them, Man, biker shorts in that era. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. Hey, you, <laughs> let me let me ask you this. Uh Charleston White was saying, like, if you over 30, you need to just stop rapping, right? So my mm -hmm. my thing is, so I, I understand that, but hip hop is like one of the only forms of music to genre where we think like that. But I didn't. The music part, I don't get that. But what tripped me out is nobody's telling dudes. Like I was just watching a um, I was watching a little YouTube documentary on um GDs that got started in in Atlanta, right? And it was this dude. He got out the army, became a cop, and then he became a GD gang member, right? But it was like in the documentary, it was like three or four dudes in there that got into the game like in a mid to late thirties. One of them was like 41. And I'm like, why everybody tell you not to be a rapper at 30 or start rapping. 
But ain't nobody telling nobody, like, dudes be start joining gangs in their 40s now. Like, where that come from? I mean, searching for family. Yeah. A lot of that. Yeah. It's just, it's the difference in that. It's just all, it's all kind of cult-like. It's all fraternity-like. You know, yeah. it's just it's just that. I think I, I think with music, I think Charleston White, like if you really haven't made a name for yourself or trying to, you kind of like get, you in a way, you know, it's like shit'll get off the pot kind of. Yeah, I get you know it. What I'm saying? Like, let, so let's say this, right? Let's say you you know somebody they can sing, they 40 years old. They didn't raise their kids already. They 45 or whatever. They raised their kids. Their kids grown, but they can sing. They just never pursued a career in it, right? And they were singing around maybe in churches or little clubs here and there hitting up karaoke. Everybody knew they can sing. They just never, they just was raising their family. Now they 45, 50, their kids grown, and they went and made an album, and it blew up. So they shouldn't sing no more? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I think it's I think it's just uh, people play with the uh, either you gonna put it's gonna be a business or a hobby, right? And I think I think when it comes to music, it's like people get a satisfaction of playing with it so much, and they don't look how how much the time wasted and you know uh, lack of persistence and consistency you. you People really look at you, look at you in your face. At the people that's really doing this shit, they look at them and say, "I really want to do it," but they're not persistent. They're not. They help. They make you want to drop the ball, fucking with them. Right, right. And that's just that's that's just how that shit is. It's like if it's a hobby, say it's gonna be a hobby. If we're not looking at no money, okay, let's just sing in church on Sunday. We right. gonna play with it and, and spend thousands in the studio and get album covers made and, and, and play this so we gonna perform and, and you don't really have a boss to perform. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a game where people it's already played with, especially at home. Either you're gonna be Barry Gordy or you're gonna be with Lee I Coconut man at the right. Kelly Chrysler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you you think like I mean, and Barry Gordy and no, I was saying you think like with people. Um, so let's say somebody 35, 40, they they rap, right? So basically, what you're saying is if uh, it's a hobby, don't drag other people and their money and time into it because into it. yeah, if you're gonna do it as a hobby, just go buy a couple beats or make your own beats, record. Let your boys listen to it and, yeah, and just yeah. enjoy the fact <laughs> of creating music. All right. Ain't no fucking one I get my record deal. And then right. the guys that sit there and show you, they'll show you right in their face. You'll put it in a, hey, let's press up our own music. Let's do this. Let's do that. They'll show you in their face. They'll spend that money 20 times. Right. 30 times before they, they make a step to do this. And, yeah, that's that's the that's the shit to get off the pot type shit. Yeah, because you know sometimes yeah. sometimes people around you just love you so much that if you say you're doing something, they get behind you, they get invested into it, and you really was just doing it as a hobby. So it's like, like damn, I ain't want to take this serious, but now since somebody believe in me, I got to take it serious. But in your heart, you know you really don't want to do it. That you don't want to go hard at it. Hey man, that's sitting in the spot rolling. Hey, yeah, it's the same thing. Man. I'm sitting in that spot to go buy clothes every other day. You don't think the boys gonna come in this motherfucker? You know right. what I'm saying? You ain't gonna leave. You ain't gonna, gonna leave this mug with a big screen TV and a bag of clothes, thinking the police ain't gonna come in here one day. Right. Right. I've been there. I, you know, I you have a goal to hustle and say, okay, I'm gonna make this 800 go right to go pressing my tapes up, my CDs up. Right. And that's that way you don't be so in the in the in the cesspool of that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's dope. That's life, man. Because logically, nine to five is right there. College. That's the logical for any woman, parent. 
<laughs> you know, to really respect the guy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. Yeah, that's funny, man. Hey, speaking of like hobbies and shit, so I mean, a lot of people was talking about like all the real estate scams going on and shit. So I was telling people like people get scammed, people get scammed all the time, B, right? But is is people can avoid a lot of that because like sometimes people just buy into the hype. They want to fit in like we talked about with gang culture and all of that, people have like have a fear of missing out. Like, oh, such and such doing this over there, I'm gonna go put my money with them. And then like a lot of the street dudes, you know, a lot of times when you deal with them and they're meeting somebody that's doing like a legit business or something, it's always like, I gotta prove myself. I wanna show you that I'm on your same level, a hustle and business acumen. So a lot of times they get swindled out of money. Then it's like, what you going to do, call the cops? And then they trying to, the street life and the business side don't mix, right? So it's like, I was just sitting back watching, like, um, people's making claims, like, oh, this person got scammed out. They gave them 100000 I'm like, gave them 100000 for what? Like, what? What convinced somebody, but then I had to think about it. I know people that probably would have gave that type of money to somebody, right? But it's still like people don't spend the time to learn a business. they will just rather right. give it to somebody else that they haven't even built a trust with. They're just in awe of the person or they come across a certain way. And it's the same way with cults. Like you see these people that used to follow now, you know, we've seen all the documentaries and people get into these right. cults, so they follow these cult leaders and give them all their money and all that. But it, it was just, it's crazy to watch and it's hard to watch at the same time because, like, you see people giving up their they savings. Like, they only had 20000 or they came up off a lawsuit for something that happened to them physically where they can't, you know what I'm saying? And they turned all their money over to somebody. Then on the flip side, it's a lot of people saying they, they lost this, but they can't even prove they even gave the money, right? Some people just jumping on a bandwagon and so on, and they didn't understand the process of the deal. They like, I asked for my money back and I didn't get it. No, you was in the middle of a deal. You can't get your money back in the middle of a deal like that. So it's just crazy, man. Yeah, if if I see if somebody trying to sell me a house and he pull up looking like a rapper, I'm gonna be scared, bro. <laughs> That's all right. 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 You know, put a suit and tie on, man. My mother don't respect this shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that's just that's bottom. Put man, put a, tie, a shirt on, a jacket, some dress shoes. You looking like MC? <laughs> Crush something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know like not, none of none of my clients has up like one or two, and I told the story before I even knew. Um, you know, I was saying I was rapping, and then like when people would see me out, they'd be like, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? It was like that ain't what because I looked at it like you know, all the attorneys I've had or done business with. I don't, you know what I'm saying? When I go to their office, I don't care if they listen to Jeezy or you know what I'm saying, G Rap. I would like it, you right. know what I'm saying? I'd be like, oh yeah, you cool, but I'm coming here to do business, you know. We could we could do that outside of that. I don't want you showing up looking like this. I need you to present yourself in a in a way where if you right. go to court or we going through probate court or whatever, you can be respected too. So it's it's right. that fine line, our generation. Our generation was the first generation to try to make business cool and and mix mm. it with hip hop because so much of what we did was hip hop related. Right. So all the record label executives were was the called the suits, but Russell Simmons kind of broke that mold. He would have on the shell toes and his tin, his jeans, you know what I'm saying? And right. And everybody else thought they can do that. Master P a mogul, Jay-Z a mogul, Diddy, you know what I'm saying? 
all them and they dress in regular clothes and they making money. Why well, can't do this other business and dress like that? I mean, you and Russell, you know, he has some casual on and some shell toes, but he ain't gonna have a big pinky ring on, you know, yeah, that fast pinky ring and a big diamond. I think that's what you know, on some real shit. One, one, um, shout out to Kwame though. When Kwame killed Patrick, put that big old earring in his ear. Yeah, man, my family was like, he about to have some trouble. Yeah, you know, it was like, you know, it was like right away. You know, you gotta kind of, kind of, you know, do that stuff gradually. You know what I'm saying? Well, I knew it when just they, like when they what? when they started calling him the hip hop mayor, I knew what the intent yeah. was because they was trying to make it. They the intent was I relate to this generation. We're young. We're the future, right? Because we're the hip hop generation. But I knew it was a stigma behind that as well, right? Because you look at what was going on at that time, all the hip hop concerts, it was just crazy, you know? So it was like, damn, to associate that with hip hop, that just wasn't the right play at that time. I think it was it was all a play to, uh, you know, ride off the Eminem success and all the stuff at home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see hip hop haven't even came to his defense since he's been home like that, you know? Nah, nah. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, what else going on in the in the hip hop world? You you see um you see like all the stuff behind Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard, oh yeah. 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 Just to see his baby mama, um, Reese Royce or something as her name or some Reese is whatever her name is, but uh, she was saying how he didn't want her his name on a birth certificate, all that type of stuff. It's like, man, damn, that shit sad, man. You yeah, know? but yeah, it's man, it's just it's just crazy out here. But yo, I um. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing like what music come out in 2024. We're gonna have to do more reviews on upcoming music because people have been asking about that too. It's just so much music out there yeah. though. It's like and then I'm I'm listening to all types and I'm finding good music or good artists in each lane. So like whether you got like your your trap rap, your drill, your backpack, you know what I'm saying. It's like somebody good in every category, and you can just be like, damn, you can get it can get overwhelming. And then you even got people that's not the top tier as far as presence and exposure, but you got the people, the B-list artists, and they got good material, or at least they'll have yeah. some good songs that you be like, man, they they got potential to do something. So it's just so much out there. Can you? Yeah, that's that. That's that cell cell phone action, man. Yeah. That's why I kind of go to the record stores yeah. and kind of see the balance a little bit, you know. Yeah. See you, what what people really yeah. invested in, you know. You know yeah. what? So like the oh, our generation, our generation keeps saying it was so much easier, right? <laughs> um, it's so much easier now, but when I I think about it, I had to really think <laughs> about like. It was a lot of people record music back then. It was just so much more expensive and difficult to get it pressed up and everything. But it's equivalent to what they have ability now. It's equivalent to like you had the major records labels. Then you had, you know, your independent labels that would have had albums or whatever in the stores. Right. The Internet just made it so that everybody who had a demo can put their stuff out to the, to the world. And it's the same way as if we went out it, just imagine if everybody that recorded a song at Moles or the disc back then had access to just upload it right away. We, we had a lot of material back then. It just wasn't as easy as, as, 
accessible. So it's like, I think if we had the internet, it would, we would have the same issues these kids are having. Yep, just overexposure. Just at the studio at that time, you would be like, man, once we get out the studio, let me get to this disc maker's book, hoping I can afford it after the studio. Yeah. And I, you would sit there and look and say, damn, you know, hoping I get to the disc makers. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's how it was, man. Real. Hey, real quick. So this is this has come back up because it's kind of old news, but everybody been talking about it again. And Rick Ross just made the comment about he was talking about the uh, five hundred thousand or lunch with Jay Z, right? And Rick Ross said to him, "It's the lunch with Jay Z because when he did have lunch with him, Jay told him, um, don't write that." Don't write to every beat, write to the songs that you can make work, right? So, and he was like, that changed his whole process of recording and everything, right? So, let me ask you, which one would you do, the 500,000 or the lunch with Jay? Man, I'm a DJ, so, hey, man, <laughs> y'all have. Y'all had that lyrical stuff with them. <laughs> I get the five hundred K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had that talk. I done met them already, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I'm yeah, I'm gonna do. I, 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 I go buy all his albums at the store right after he gave me the five hundred thousand. Yeah. Probably go to a concert. Hey, you man. you can afford Beyonce tickets then. I mean, somebody like on some real stuff like this. Say, for instance, like uh, if it was somebody like life changing, changing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, those guys. Is this? You know, we hire worship some of those guys, but just just on some stuff like you know, going back. You know, some old. Uh, Traveling a time machine or something to go talk to Easy E. Okay, yeah. that's something different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, like most man. people saying they want to they meet with Jay Z. It's kind of more like yeah. a fan thing. You know what I'm saying? Because like, if yeah. if I want to if I want to do lunch, I want to meet the person and a team, or I'm meeting with you so I can write a book or something to make some money off of the stories you told. Or right. Like if you. Right. If you right. tell me five hundred thousand, or I can spend a month talking to Quincy Jones and document it, I'm doing a month with Quincy Jones. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. That's if but, okay. If you talk to Jay Z for a month, they can yeah. have a five hundred thousand. Let me. I can hang with Jay Z for a month. No, I'm still oh, yeah. taking so five hundred thousand. I'm still I'm still taking the five hundred thousand. It's the difference, Quincy Jones, Jay Z, right? Quincy Jones got some. He it's probably just soaking got game up. Man, yeah, it's a, it's different. But I, I'm taking a, I'm taking a 500k. I'm sorry, because I can I can become my own millionaire or whatever after that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't let you get close to them that got money anyway. So yeah, yeah, that's just how it goes anyway. Yeah, make the best of it. Hey, I want y'all to check out this book, man. They, they got funky fresh up in here, man. And there you go. Chicken Bone is called the Vault. Oh, it's out of Canada, man. Who is that on the cover? Yeah, Somebody. It's, it's, it's featuring Boom of the Lab Animals. Uh, Dija. It's some Canada, some Canada MCs, bro. It's out of Canada. All right. You know, they got me. They, they, they got me. They got us. All right. We got Mark Hicks up in there. We'll see. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. They got me uh, in there. Oh, yeah. Who? Michi me. No, it's featuring uh, Rough, Roughneck Jihad. They got Boom 
my man Boom 2G, he on our show. Y'all subscribe to the channel. Y'all can see Boom 2G on the show. Uh, Insight, Night, Knights of the Round Table. A couple guys from Canada, you know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, y'all check this out. Man. We got more to come, you know? Yep. That's yep. what's up. And shout out to the Fugees, man. They got Outsiders on the road right now. We'll get the album with Pace One, DJ King Dave, B Boy Red just featured on there. The dope sells itself. They got Young Z and Pace One on the road with them. Good, good to see that, you know. Yeah, yeah. shit bumping like Detroit potholes. Yeah. All right, man. We yeah. well, we out. This B Boy Red. I'm DJ Butter, y'all. Y'all subscribe to the channel. We almost had a thousand subscribers. Thank y'all, man. Well, we almost one year in effect. And yeah. uh, shout out to Detroit Hip Hop, old and young. Y'all keep it together, man. Fuck all that resistance shit, because it's too much resistance. They don't support enough. We gotta support each other. You know what I'm saying? And that's just it, man. They can't keep seeing our dirty draws, man. You know? Yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> we got right, keep our funky fresh. <laughs> All right, y'all. Yes, we out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Peace out.